Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm very excited to have you here to learn more about Kinton Spaces. So my name is Larissa Squire, and I'm a customer success manager here at Kinton. So before we jump into the platform, let's go over some housekeeping. So you're likely listening using your computer speaker system, but if you prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane, and the dial-in information will pop up. If you have questions at any point, you can ask them by typing into the questions pane of the control panel. So we'll collect your questions and answer them during the Q&A session at the end. All right, so what we'll be covering today. So what is a space? Creating a space, space feature, managing spaces, space templates, and then we'll briefly review what a guest space is. So let's jump into the platform. So first, let's just briefly go over what is a space. So spaces are used to communicate with other team members. When creating a space, you can invite specific team members and then discuss and share information on the specific topic. So once you're in a space, you can create apps that link to that space. And then with these apps, you can manage information, documents, or to-dos to be able to easily collaborate with your team. So you can create two different types of spaces. So one is a space comprised of just a single thread with links to related apps or spaces, or a space where multiple threads are enabled, which has a similar layout to Portal Home with an announcement board, threads, apps, and related links to outside apps and spaces. So a thread, that's a collection of comments related to a certain topic. So this allows you to easily organize the information and comments within the space, and your team members can post comments on the topic related threads. So apps can also be used to share information within the space. You can add apps into a space and manage information provided in the space documents and to-dos. An app added into the space is referred to as an in-space app, opposed to an app not created in the space. So the features we will be reviewing today are those seen by admins of the space. So if you're watching and don't see all of these features, then you're not an admin of that particular space. So let's hop over to creating a space. So to create a space, you're gonna click the plus button to the right of the space section. So if you don't see a space section at all, then this feature has been disabled for your subdomain. And if you see the space section, but do not see this plus sign, then unfortunately you, unfortunately you don't have permission to create the space. But let's assume everyone does and move forward. So we're gonna click the plus, and then you're gonna choose new space. So we're gonna to briefly touch on that guest space a little later. So right now we will choose create a space from scratch. However, the other templates you see here are called space templates. So we're also gonna review that a little later, but for now just note that those are like the skeleton version of a previously created space. So we'll create from scratch. So first we're gonna name this space. We're gonna choose whether it's a private or a public space. A private space will only be visible to those added in as members. If you want the space to resemble Portal Home, then you must check this to enable multiple threads. Otherwise, the space will only be comprised of a single thread. Then choose if you'd like the members to be able to unfollow threads or leave the space. Down here, you'll choose a cover photo. You don't have to go crazy about the cover photo. Only a small sliver will be shown on the top portion of the space, but then the image will also be shown on Portal Home when choosing a space. So next, you can either save or you can hop over to Members tab to add in other members. You'll check the box Administrator if you'd like to add someone else as an admin of the space, but you can always skip this step and come back to it later. So right now, we'll click Save. So this is what your space will look like if multiple threads is not enabled. So it just is comprised of a single thread where you can discuss whatever topic is called. So we're gonna go back into the space settings and we're going to enable multiple threads. So we're gonna review the one that looks similar to Portal Home. So we'll save this. As you see now, you're able to add new threads 
And if we click customer success, it takes you to this now multiple thread enabled space. So now we're gonna review the space features. So first you have the announcement. So this is similar to portal home announcements. You can customize the announcement board within the space. The contents within the space announcement can be more specific towards the contents of the space. So maybe you wanna share new customers that have just joined or any recent contact that has been made to customers. So this information would be much better put inside of this customer success space than over the main portal home where you'll wanna be more general since it goes out to everyone. So only space admins will have the ability to edit. So to edit the announcement, you'll click this icon, the edit icon on the right of the announcement section. You're gonna type the message to your team here. You can use the text formatting tools if desired to attach data from an app, click attach app. And then to upload images, you'll click the little paper clip. To bookmark helpful links, you can use the hyperlink uh, by clicking this little link icon. And then when you're all set, you'll click save. And it'll update your announcement. Okay, so now we'll hop over to threads. So threads are discussion forums about different topics for team members to collaborate on. So threads are only going to be located in spaces. A multi-threaded space like this one can have many discussion threads. When viewing a multi-threaded space, the threads are located on the top right and list all the threads that are in the space. So currently we just have that one. So you're gonna click on the thread to display its content. The thread pane on the right shows apps, members, and then if you have any related apps and spaces in the thread, so that would all pop up here. And then to stop following a discussion, you'd click unfollow and then or follow if you're not currently following it. So to create a new thread, you must be in a multi-threaded space, obviously, to create the new thread. So from here, you can just click new thread right here. So on the new thread page, you're gonna enter a title. So we'll just do customer support. Do you wanna talk about customer support? You can type a message and add content to the body text area, and then use the editing tools here as well. And you can also attach an app, so if you wanna have graphs displayed um, within your thread, you can do that here as well. So click Save to create the thread. So the new thread displays in the space that you've created it. It shows the title. Any body text would show here. The user who last updated it and the last updated uh, date and time. So to edit the thread title and or body text, you'll click this edit icon right here to make the changes and then you'll click save again. You can also create a new thread from the main space page in the thread section on the right. So we'll go back to our main space. Click plus, name your thread, add a body text if you'd like as a description. That just kind of helps if people um, navigate to that thread and they don't know what you know what's being discussed within the thread. The description can give them a good idea on what they could find there. And then we'll save. All right. So to delete a thread, you're going to open the thread you wish to delete. You can't delete the, the initial thread that was created. But for the other thread, so you'll open the thread you wanna delete, click the three ellipses and hit delete this thread and then delete. And then it'll disappear from the thread section. So please note, a thread can only be deleted by the user who created the thread or by the administrator of the space to which the thread belongs. And threads automatically created upon speech creation, like this customer success thread that cannot be deleted. So now we'll do following and unfollowing the thread. I briefly touched on that earlier. So you're gonna open the thread you'd like to follow or unfollow, and then you'll just click that up here. And then to refollow, click follow again. So notifications in all notifications will be received for threads that you're following. So adding a comment to a thread. So once a thread is created, you can add comments. So you're gonna open the thread that you'd like to comment on. And then you'll click into write your comment. 
So the box will display the editing tools. You're going to add in your comments, use the editing tools like the color change, text change, add photos, links, URLs. So we'll add a quick note, mention someone, and then they'll get a to me notification. And then post when you're all set. So this will send Logan Fugitan um, a to me notification in his portal. So replying to a comment in a thread. So after you or another user has posted a comment, you can reply by doing the following. You can like the comment. Click reply to reply to it. So if this was a comment made by somebody else, it would automatically pull up their name, but since I created the comment, it's not going to let me reply to myself. You can click reply to all to at mention not only the commenter, but also whoever was mentioned in the comment reply. So if this was created by someone else, it would say Logan and then Larissa if someone else is clicking to reply all. Cancel that out. So you'll click action to view any actions associated with this thread. Edit action, and you can also create new actions. So an action allows you to push over the common information from a thread and create a new record in an app. So I use this feature in, in our own Kintone subdomain for a to-do or review app. That allows me to organize the tasks I'm asked to do or review off of a thread. So in this example, if Logan was to see this, it says, please review the support ratings, he could click the action button, click the to do a review app if it was made here, and then that will, the information, the permalink and everything will be sent over to that other app. So that's a really good way once you have lots of people um, in Kintone creating lots of thread, it's a great way to organize the different things you need to review if you don't quite have time right then. So you're gonna click permalink to display the URL to the comments. And then you can copy that to easily navigate to a comment in the future. And then lastly, you can delete your own comments. You can't delete others. All right, so now we'll go back to the main space page. So now we'll review InSpace apps. So an InSpace app is simply an app belonging to that particular space. So apps created within a space will belong to that space. So the following applies to InSpace apps. The app appears in the space portal under apps, the InSpace app belongs to the public app group, and this cannot be changed. This group cannot be changed for the InSpace app. Apps belonging to a private space can only be accessed by the members of the space. So it's kind of nice because you don't have to worry about setting specific um, app permissions um, because it's only going to be accessible to those people in that private space if it is private. And then in apps, InSpace apps cannot be moved to a different space. So they're going to live in the space forever. So adding an app to this space, uh, from within the space, we'll create a native app. So only apps created from within the space will display here under apps. So next to apps, we'll click plus. You can add an app as if you were adding it on the portal home, so it's no different. So we'll just come, we'll just add this meeting in a tab. There you go. There we have the first InSpace app for this customer success space. So now we're gonna go over people. So here you can see the members of the public or private space. You can add users to the space by clicking the plus icon. You can search for the user, group or department, and then you'll click save. So people listed here will get a to me notification when a new thread is added to the space. They're automatically following the thread, but they may unfollow if they wish, as long as the administrator did not disable that. And they will also receive an all notification if a thread they're following has changed in description or if the announcement has changed. So they'll receive an all notification for that. And we'll go over related apps and spaces. So you can add apps and spaces that are related to the content of a particular space. So this allows space users to quickly access the linked apps and spaces under this related apps and spaces section. So the apps that you're gonna link here are apps that are not native to this space. 
So they're apps that live outside of this particular customer success space, but you might think are super helpful for the people who are in this space a lot to be able to navigate to easily. So right here, related apps and spaces, you're going to click the plus icon. To add an app, select the app from the drop-down list, enter an app name in the search box, and then click it to add it here. And then to add a space, you're gonna select spaces, and we'll do design. And then click into it to add it. And then to delete an app or a space, you'll just click the X. And then when you're all set, you're gonna save your changes. And then that's gonna show up down here in the related apps and spaces. So next we'll review the space settings. So to navigate to space settings, you're gonna click the three ellipses on the top right of the space homepage. If you're not an admin, you will not see all of these options. So you'll click new thread to create a new thread. Uh, create app, that's another way to create an in-space app. The manage related apps and spaces, that's another way to navigate to the managing the related apps and spaces. So leave space, you can leave the space as long as the admin did not disable people from leaving. Manage members, here you can add in new space members and assign admins like with the people feature down below. Space settings, so here you can change the name of the space, make the space private, enable multiple threads if you haven't already done so, block users from joining or leaving the space, and or unfollowing and following threads, and you can also change the cover photo here. So that's just like, it looks exactly the same as when we initially created the space. And then we have create space template. So this is where you can create a space template to duplicate this, um, the space within the same subdomain. And then with that space template, you can export it to another subdomain. So we're gonna review space templates more a little bit later, but note this is how you will create the template of the space. And then delete the space will delete the space. So now that we've reviewed all of these space features, we're gonna go into managing spaces. So you're gonna use the space management page to view usage information about the spaces in your portal. You can only view this next part if you have Kintone administration permission. So navigate to space management by clicking the gear wheel. And from the drop down, select Kintone Administration. And then under Spaces, you're going to select Space Management. So up here under Current Usage, the limit column shows the allowed limits under your current license agreement for spaces and guest spaces. And then the current column shows the number of spaces and guest spaces currently used in your portal. So you're going to click License Upgrade to open the Kintone Store and manage your account. And then in this table underneath Current Usage, Kintone Administrators can view a list of all existing spaces. Additionally, Kintone Administrators can perform the following actions on every listed space. So they can join the space. So when an administrator joins a space, they're a Kintone Administrator should be specific. So a kin to an administrator joins the space, they're automatically set as an administrator of the space. They can choose to leave a space, and they can also choose to delete a space. So deleting a space deletes all data in the space, including apps placed in that space. So in-space apps will be deleted if a space is deleted. So please note that deleted spaces and apps cannot be restored. So now let's go over this table of space details. So ID, the ID automatically assigned by the system when the space is created. The name of the space, you can click the name to open up the space. The type of space is gonna be either public, private, or a guest space. Here you'll see the number of administrative members in the space, and then the total amount of members in the space. Next, you'll see updated by, which shows the user who last updated the space. You'll click the user's name and you can open up their profile page. The updated date time column shows the column and time the space was last updated. So you can um, click the column heading to reverse the sort list. And then we have join or leave, which gives you the option to either join or leave the space. 
If you're a member of this space, the option is to leave. If you are not a member, the option is to join as an administrator from this Kintona administration spot. And then lastly, as we mentioned earlier, the trash can is going to delete the space. So that is space management. Next, we're going to go to space templates. So what are space templates? So I showed you this briefly when creating a new space. Kintone administrators can create templates from the settings of a space. A space template is a model that users can use to create a copy of the space with the same design and settings. So you can use the template to create a new space and then modify it as needed. The templates created are available for non-administrative users to create their new spaces, although regular end users can use specific or can use the space templates. The ability to create and delete the templates does require Kintone administration permission. So templates can be exported to and imported from a file. Exported files can be imported into Kintone even under different subdomains. So now we're going to navigate to that space template page to import, export, and manage space templates. So to navigate there from the gear wheel, again, we're going to go into Kintone administration. And then under spaces, we're going to click space template. So the following field will display for each space template. So we have the ID, the unique ID automatically assigned when the space template was created. We have name assigned to that space template. Created by shows the administrator who created the space template. Again, you can click in their name to open their profile setting or their profile page. Um, created on shows the date and time the space template was created. You can click that in to reverse the sort order. And then apps in template shows the names of apps that are included in the space template. So those are those in space apps that come along with that space template. So you're going to click this edit icon over here to edit the space template's name and description. The name must be 30 characters or less. The edit space template window also shows the apps and threads in the template, if there are any. So you're going to click this little down arrow to export the space template to send over to import into a different subdomain. And then click the trash can icon to delete the template. So now we're going to do creating a template from a space. So we'll pop back over there. As shown earlier, you must create the space template within the space um, you'd like to template. So we'll template this customer success. So access the space. You're going to click the three ellipses. Click create space template. Choose the name and an optional description. So just so we don't get confused by the two, we're going to call it customer success. So we'll just keep it because it is the template. OK, so save. So now it's a little pop-up up here just says go to Kintone Administration to edit or delete it. So we're going to hop back to Kintone Administration, Space Template. All right. So exported files can be imported into Kintone even under different subdomains, as I mentioned before. So you can click that down arrow to export the template, which is on the right. You're going to name the file, and then you will export. The space template is saved in a file with the extension .sptpl. So importing space templates, you can import a template even when it was exported from a different domain. That's really good for partners. If you want to create, um, create a space for one of your customers that you're helping get onto Kintone, you can create it in your own subdomain and then export it for them to import it into their own. So you're going to click Import. You're going to browse for the file, and then when you find it, you'll click Import. The imported space template then will display here on the space templates list. So not all data will be included in the space template. So data not included is settings that specify whether a space is private or public, comments, records in the app, in the apps, um, periodic reports in apps, apps linked using related apps, which are the ones that weren't created in that space. So it's only going to pull over those in space apps. Actions with a destination field in an app that was not created in the specific space. 
attached periodic reports that were shown in the announcement of a space or thread. We mentioned links in the announcement or a space or a thread. The text will remain, but if you said at Larissa Squires in one of the descriptions, it will not pull over that link because it's in, you know, if it's in a different subdomain, you wouldn't be able to access my profile page because I'm not in there. And then also attachments larger than 20 megabytes. So that is the end of our space templates review. So lastly, I'm gonna quickly review what a guest space is. So what's a guest space? So a guest space allows you to collaborate with external partners, customers, et cetera, who are not users of your platform. They're not regular end users. So guests can view only the information in the guest space that they have been invited to join. So Kinjoin users with permission can create guest spaces. So that's where we saw here, new guest space. So in guest spaces, you can send invitation emails to your external partners, customers, et cetera. And then once they receive the emails, they can access Kintone from the email and then create their guest account. So guests can access only the guest space and the apps that belong to that guest space. So the guest spaces you are a member of can be found in the spaces section of Portal Home and we'll have a little tab on the top left of the space image. So guest user features are limited to those of regular end users. So not all of the features you have in the regular space will be available in the guest space, simply because um, it is including uh, people outside of the actual subdomain. And then guest user pricing is $9 per month per user. If you have any questions about that, feel free to send over a message to me or your regional account executive and we can talk that over further. And then this concludes our training on spaces. So we're now going to begin answering some questions submitted during today's presentation. So as a reminder, you can still submit questions to the questions pane in your attendee control panel. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of seconds to formulate any questions you have now. All right, so it looks like I got a couple questions. So what is an all notification that you get when following a thread? So an all notification will show up in your notification bell when you select all from the dropdown. So all notifications show you things going on in your subdomain that, weren't directly, that you weren't directly mentioned in. So if we hop back over here. So if we click all, that's gonna show you the all notifications. So this helps create a transparent environment and it makes it easier to collaborate and give input on items that you aren't normally involved in. So all notifications differ in that you will not get a little number icon to review the all notifications. So when you get a direct to me mention, you will get that little icon. So the all notifications, that's just kind of something that you'll, you won't get a specific bright red number four, but you'll just have to remember to go and take a look at that all notification, see what's going on in the company that you're not normally involved in. And then next question, what access do you guest users have to the platform? So guest users will only be able to access the specific guest space they're invited to join. So you will not have to disable permissions for the guest users with your other spaces or apps because they won't even know that they exist. So they're gonna log in and their portal homepage looks similar to yours. However, they can't see the announcement board that you've created for Portal Home and they only have access to that guest space in the apps of the space that they have joined. So you don't have to worry about setting crazy permissions for those guest users because they're only going to have access to that particular guest space. So it looks like that is all the time that we have for questions. So thank you everyone for joining today's live training session. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, support at kintone.com. So you'll receive an email in the next 24 hours with this webinar recording. It's also gonna go up on our YouTube customer training video channel. 
And on behalf of Kintone, thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.